to Chris and Ashley's yoga. I uh, just messed up walking that uh, into the frame, but no matter, we're here to have some fun, do a little bit of yoga. Um, Ashley's going to take us through a little bit of meditation just to center ourselves, get ourselves in the right frame of mind, uh, and leave any stresses or worries around like that there at the door or off your mat. When we're doing yoga, we're here to focus on yoga. Okay, so Ashley is going to take us away. Uh, so we're just going to give you a little moment to get like a towel or a strap. Do the strap there. Uh, strap. <laughs> Sometimes your yoga mat will come with a strap like this. You'll just need it for some of the poses today. Um, so. uh, unless you're, you've really mobile shoulders, which uh, I do not. Uh, it's first off like this here. It's so just the way handy. Oh, this is my good side. I can sort of creep them together. Oh, for the other side, it is nearly impossible. Not a chance. So what you do is you get your strap around, then and then you get a strap, pulling them together. So that's why you need it, and you can use it for a whole host of other posts as well. If you have blocks as well, and you like using them, you can get them as well. Again, there's nothing bad with taking blocks or using the, the straps. Uh, in fact, if you don't have the, that range of motion, it will help you progress faster. That's why they're used. So, here's so up. if everyone's ready, if you have your water and everything, we're just going to take a seat on our mat. So you can sit cross-legged, you can take half lotus like we're doing, or you can just do normal cross legs, or you can sit up on your knees into hero pose, or you can just have your legs stretched out in front. You can sit on a block as well if you find it hard to sit up straight. You find that you're kind of hunched over, it really helps. Um, we're just going to place our palms on our knees, just faced up. We're going to close our eyes. And we're just going to take a deep breath in and sigh out. Another deep breath in, sigh it out, and one more, breathe in, sigh out. So usually in the mornings or throughout your day you kind of have a little narrative going on in your head, usually you're seeing the world in a certain way and you might have the little messages going on in your brain that you don't want to be there, maybe they're getting you down, um, or maybe they're just like normal like day to day thoughts. But uh, in yoga, we try and look at what's going on and use that acknowledgement to bring us back to the present moment. So just take a moment to see what kind of energy you've brought to this morning's class. Maybe you've spent a lot of time scrolling this morning and you're taking on everyone else's life, everyone else's images. Stress. Stress. <laughs> Especially all the stuff going on in the news and all that. You just, you just see what energy you have that you brought to the mat, acknowledge it, and then just let it go. And then we'll just bring it back to ourselves. So just notice how your body feels. Notice how it feels as you sit on your mat. Relax your toes, your feet, all the way up through your legs. Feel your sit bones in contact with the ground. Sit up nice and straight, really elongate that spine and position your head as if you were looking forward. Let your shoulders just drop down your back nice and gently. And just feel the weight of your arms by your sides. Just relax your face. Unclench your jaw. going to 
start taking a deep breath into the low belly. Just hold at the top for a second and then exhale. Inhale into the low belly again and just pause and exhale. Inhale into the low belly and the ribcage. Pause at the top and exhale. Inhale again, drawing into the low belly and the ribcage. Just really expanding to the sides and then exhaling. And then we'll connect the three sections. So we'll take the breath into the low belly, the rib cage, and the top of the lungs. Really inflate your chest and pause at the top, and then we're going to exhale. Inhale and fill up the whole torso. And exhale. So just continue with this breath and since we're kind of slowing down and deepening our breath this is a great time to reframe how we're feeling about our practice and about our day so if you want to set a wee intention for the, even just this practice uh, or your whole day then feel free to do that now. long slow breaths. We're going to pay really close attention to our breath all the way during the practice as much as we can. If you feel yourself getting lost at any stage or frustrated, um, just take it back to the breath. like you know yourself how to move and treat them and everything we obviously can't see you so we can't tell you what to do um, and then if you want to take a break at any time just go into child's pose so you're just sitting your foot on your heels and you're stretching your arms out in front and laying your head down on the ground so we'll just begin by warming up our neck so we're just going to do little circles with our neck we're just going to draw circles in the air with our nose Try and sync it with your breathing. So when you're rolling your head back, breathe in. And then when you're coming to the front, breathe out. And then we'll change direction. Inhale on the way up. 
and exhale down. Inhale up, just creating a load of space in our torsos and the sides of our body. And down. Inhale up, exhale down. Now we're going to drop our hands. You're going to take your left hand onto your right knee and you're going to stretch your right arm across the top with your palm facing the ground and you're going to pull your chest out and look up at the ceiling. So really drawing that hand that's in the air, really drawing that back behind you. Then take it back down. I'm going to come back to centre, take the right hand this time and place it on the left knee and we're just going to use that as an anchor to pull our chest out. We're going to extend our arm above our head with our palm facing ground and just look up towards the ceiling. Thank you. 
can release your back and separate your shoulders out, if that makes any sense. So you're kind of leaning back, drop your head. Then extend your legs again. We're going to take our hands out behind us and just go for it one more time. So push your hips up, engage your quads, squeeze your bum. Two, three, come back down, give your knees a hug one more time. Take your legs out in front, we're going to roll our ankles again because that one, I feel it in my ankles. So we're just going to come onto our fronts now, you're going to come onto your belly. And we're going to try and keep our heels together the whole time that we do this and our arms are just going to be stretched out in front. So you're lifting up your legs and you're extending your arms in front. We're going to take our arms out to the side and out the back. And try and lift your chest as much as you can. So out to the front, sides, try and keep your heels together, point your toes and the back. Out in front. Reaching up as far as you can, sides and back, and then drop it down and relax. And then we're going to come up on dog, boys. We're just going to do some back here. So, before we do this, we're just going to kind of warm up our shoulders so you can do your scapular push ups from back here if you want, or you can do it from a plank. So, we're just going to drop our head down. We're going to roll our shoulders back. And you know how to explain these more than I do. So we're trying okay. to separate our shoulders. Not like scapula push ups. Okay. Yeah, so index fingers pointing forward. Spread your hands as much as you can. Uh, directly under your shoulders. Give your weight to your hands. And from there, you're just going to uh, drop your chest and then squeeze your shoulder blades together without bending your elbows. And then from there, you're going to push your hands into the ground to separate your shoulder blades and lift your spine up towards the ceiling. Inhale down, and exhale up. Inhale down, you should feel a nice compression when you're down here, and then exhale up, you should feel the traps separate and stretch. Inhale down, nice and slow. If the elbows bend a little bit, it's okay. And exhale up. You just don't want to be bending loads in the arm. Inhale down one more. Squeeze. And exhale up. Now we're going to do the pack head. Um, actually, we'll skip that. I don't think we need it. Yeah. So we're going to come from our pack head position into puppy pose. So you just have to make sure that your legs and your hips stay in the same line. Are they in the same line? Just stay the same as if you're on all fours, so keep all those right angles there. And we're just going to walk our hands out in front. You're trying to work your chest down to the mat, your chest and your chin. And then if you want, you can come up onto your fingertips to extend the stretch. Only go as far as you can because this is quite a strong stretch, but it's really good for opening your shoulders. If uh, you have a block, you can put that under your chest and that just lets you relax into it a little bit more if you're tight. But again, if um, you're not feeling it with the block, get rid of it. Try and keep your hips stacked over your knees. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see mine, but mine are stacked a little bit forward past my knees. If you look at Ashwin's, Ashwin's is perfect. It's just because I'm in tight. Try and keep the hips back. Chest. Look forward. If anyone is finding that they want to extend it as well, you can come up onto your toes. So this is like quite advanced. So you can come up like this. And then we'll just gently walk our hands back in. Oh, come into child's pose. Just come up to sleep.
Sunday. We're gonna do five squats to overhead reach, uh, and then I'll show you one more stretch for the warm up, and then we'll get into the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna say. So we're squatting down, arms come back behind, make sure your knees don't come past your toes. I'll try not to make them come past your toes. And then you come up, you're stretching your shoulders, but you're stretching your arms behind you, then come down. Inhale down, exhale up. Three, inhale down, exhale up. Four, inhale down, exhale up. Five, exhale up. Now we're gonna come back down into our squat. We're gonna take our left hand on the inside of our left foot, or you can take it to your left knee. If you can't reach down that far, we're going to extend the right arm up. So looking up towards the ceiling, really opening that chest. And then we're going to come back to centre, stand back up, push your hips out, come back down into a squat, take your right hand, place it on the outside, on the inside of your right foot, or onto your right knee. Extend your left arm up and look up towards the ceiling. And then come back to centre, stand back up. Woo! And now it's Chris's turn. Should be feeling uh, quite juicy now. Super warm, uh, a little bit more loose. If you have any tension in any spots from holding poses, I find. Uh, when we're doing all those seated poses or a lot of work on the back, the back can get quite tight. So if you want to shake it out anytime, just drop your head, let your hands be heavy, and just shift your shoulders from left to right, and you should get a little bit of relief from that. But at any point during the session, you can stop, you can take child's pose, uh, and just breathe and relax. Okay, uh, If you do that and you really enjoy it, well then do it more. So, to start off, we're going to start off with a little seated position. So, Sukhasana or a bum bum, half lotus or full lotus, whatever you can do. Go from here. We're just going to do some torso twists. So, oh, we probably should have mentioned at the very start of this that uh, this is a far opening session. So, uh, again, if uh, the woo woo sort of side of things, the, the sort of yogi side of things, if you're feeling like you're a little bit cynical, if you're a little bit sort of uh, holding a little bit of anger or resentment or anything like that there, uh, apparently releasing all these muscles in your chest, your shoulders and uh, improving your posture uh, will have to just be a little bit more open, a little bit nicer and a little bit more caring. But for the practical side of things, uh, again if you're rounding your shoulders and you have an office job, you're sitting out at your desk all day and you're hunched up, this will help roll the shoulders down your back, stretch out all of these pushing sort of muscles and they uh, help you sit in these positions here with a lot more ease. Okay, and then also when you're doing all your rows um, or all your overhead presses, they'll help with your shoulders not being clicky or uh, feeling like a uh, clumpy when you're doing any of this crap here. Okay, so first off, we're gonna rotate the torso. So we're gonna bring our left hand to our right knee. We're gonna bring our right hand behind us. We're gonna turn the torso, lift our chest, take a big deep breath in, inflate your chest. And then we're going to exhale and go deeper. Into the twist, so still lifting the chest. And we're going to try and look over our shoulder, take another breath in. And then exhale, go deeper. One more. And exhale, go deeper. And slowly come back. Yeah, and you should notice that when you're doing this one here, every time you inhale, it inflates your chest, gives yourself a little bit of room, and then when you exhale, you can actually twist a little bit deeper into the stretch. So, right hand on the left knee, left hand behind you, lift your chest, turn on the torso, big deep breath in, and exhale, go deeper. Hold on the knee, big deep breath in, lift your chest, and exhale, go deeper. 
one more, take deep breath in, and exhale, go deeper. Slowly come out of the twist, shake out your shoulders, shake out your sides, and then from there, a uh, bum bum bum, we're gonna go for a uh, easy pose, which is this here, but we're gonna do cactus arms. So cactus arms is basically like this here, but you can do it with your shoulders hunched, and that's incorrect, or you can roll your shoulders down your back, engage all those muscles that hold your scapula in place. And we're just gonna hold here, and we're gonna breathe and fill our lungs. Okay, I'm just gonna do this on my head to half lower. I realize that looks silly. And then from here, take a deep breath in. And exhale. And again. One more. hands on your knees and roll out the shoulders. You don't have to try too hard, you just do this to feel good. One side at a time. Just start connecting with your body. Do what feels good. If it feels really bad, don't lean into it too much. Um, so next up we've got our thunderbolt pose, our hero pose where we switch onto our knees and we're going to stretch out the shoulders. So this is where we need that strap. So with the with Thunderbolt or Hero Pose, um, knees together and then from there you want to separate your heels. So you want your heels apart, so uh, boom, and you want to sit down between the space between your heels, engage your lower back, you don't want to be grounding out, so engage your lower back and sit tall. This is really, really uncomfortable for you. You can get your block and you can sit with the block between your heels. Again, it's much more important to be able to sit in these positions and relax that can struggle through, be all tense, and sit in those very, very uncomfortable positions, okay? If you are comfortable, you'll be able to sit in it for longer and you'll get better results from it. So, find your strap, drop it in your back, we're gonna start with our left hand on top first, our right hand behind, we're gonna walk our right hand up our back, our left hand down our back, you're gonna clasp your fingers together, just like this, or you're gonna use your strap, and from the time. And then from here, you're going to take a big deep breath in, lift your chest, and then exhale, try and walk those hands towards each other. Again, big deep breath in, lift your chest. change the sides. So right arm over the top, drop the other strap there, grab the bottom of it and you're just going to slowly start walking that hand up. Sit up nice and tall, big deep breath in, lift your chest. Do that little heel roll because uh, when you're doing that thunderbolt pose, your laces are the instep of your foot is supposed to be on the ground. And for a lot of people, this uh, plantar flexion is really, really tough around here. Okay, it might feel painful, it's not too bad for you, it's actually really good for your, your ankles. So don't 
be worrying about too much with roll letting and you'll get more and more comfortable there. The more you do it. So uh, after that we're going to go for a, a downward dog to a plank. We're going to do 10 reps of this. Okay, we're going to do 10 reps before we stop. If you need to stop because uh, your arms are too tired, go for it, take child's pose. But when we come into our plank, uh, the idea that we want uh, to practice or the thing we want to practice is come into your plank position, draw your shoulder blades down your back and spread them across your back as much as you can. Okay, so we're separating the shoulder blades as much as we can. So, come on to all fours. Index fingers point forward. Come up into your plank position. And from here, we're gonna lift our hips, bend your knees, drop your shoulders, Fill your belly with air, push your heels down towards the ground. And then we're going to exhale, shift the weight forward, spread the shoulder blades down our back. Hold here for one breath. And then we're going to inhale, come back up, lift your hips. Big deep breath in. I can already tell him this is going to be so hard. And exhale. Inhale, lift the hips. It's going to be awful. You're disappointed I put this in. And exhale, shift the weight forward. Take a big deep breath in. Shift the weight forward for number five. Halfway there again, spreading the shoulder blades across, not letting the hips dip down too much, not keeping them too high. Take deep breath in, lift the hips, bend the knees, try and push your heels down towards the ground. And shift the weight forward into your plank, spread the shoulder blades, one breath here. Six. Again, pushing down through the shoulders, dropping the heels. And then shoot the weight back forward into your plank. Big deep breath in. And exhale. Inhale with the hips. That's seven. Three more. Back into your plank. One breath here. <laughs> your arms are shaking. And lift the hips. This is tough, but that's the whole point. Try and stay calm. Again, your arms can shake and you don't have to panic. And shift the weight forward. That's eight down. Two more. Again, still spreading the shoulders. And lift the hips. Big deep breath in. Shift the weight forward. And one full breath here. Inhale. And exhale, come forward. Last one. 
Big deep breath in. And lift the hips, inhale. And from here, you're gonna drop down to your knees. Sit onto your heels. And just take child's pose for a moment. And just enjoy this night of relaxation. From here, guys, we're gonna just shift the weight back forward. We're gonna go into a weight flow now. So, again, take your time with this. We're gonna hold each position roughly for around one breath. But again, you don't have to hold it exactly like that. Just try and get it to there. So, we're gonna go from down dog to low lunge. We do this all the time during our warm ups. So, again, index fingers pointing forward. Spread your hand, your fingertips. Your weight is evenly distributed uh, from all your hands or from every part of your hand, not just on the palm. <laughs> not just from your palm, not just from your fingertips, but evenly distributed throughout your hand. So we're gonna lift the hips into our down dog. Big deep breath in. Lift the leg, left leg first. Extend the toes away. And then exhale, bend the knee. Bring the foot all the way up beside the hand. Drop the back knee, lace on the ground. And then from there, we're gonna take another breath in. Lift one arm up, twist, sink the hips forward, and then exhale, bring the hand back down. From there, we're going to turn our back foot under, we're going to lift our hips, come up into this deep position. Oh. Lift your back knee, sink down, big deep breath in, and then exhale, we're going to straighten out that front knee, take a wee step forward with the back foot, and you're going to set the back heel on the ground. Then from here, you're going to bring your hands together, clasp them behind your back, roll your shoulders down your back, and then from there, you're just going to hinge your hips and stretch that front leg. Take one breath here. And then from there, our back foot, we're going to let that turn 45 degrees. We're going to bend the front knee. Then from here, our hips are going to turn square and face forward. And you're just going to reach up and sink into that front knee. And from here, you're just going to straighten into that front leg and drop your arms. You're going to turn your back foot back. If you need to take a wee step, take a wee step. Then you're going to clasp your own elbows together. So you're going to grab your hands just like this here, but behind your back. If you can't, you can grab only wrists. And then from there, you're going to do the same thing and just fold forward. Try and keep your toes pointing straight forward. Push through that front leg. Back nice and flat. And then from there, we're going to slowly come back up. Turn our back foot 45 degrees. If you want, you can take a wee step to lengthen it. Turn your hips square and we're going to go back into warrior. Inhale up. And exhale, sink deeper into it. And then from here, you're just going to step the back foot onto the balls of your feet. Boom. And you're going to take a big step back until you're in that high lunge position. And from there, you're going to clasp your hands together behind your back. Push your hands down, open your shoulders, knees out, and then you're just going to lay your belly inside your thigh or on your thigh. And then you're going to start trying to lift that hand up towards the ceiling and drop your head. Take a 
take deep breath in. And from there, you're gonna slowly let the hands down, peel yourself back up, bend the back knee until it's to the ground, laces down, hands to the ground. And from there, you're gonna swipe this leg back up into your down dog. And then you're gonna set it down nice and easy, walk at your dog. And then drop down to your knees and enjoy child's pose for a wee minute. And again, just enjoy the sense of relaxation here. Your body's just learning these new positions, and the more you relax, the more it will accept them. back foot 45 degrees, take a wee step to extend, bend the front knee, turn the hips square, inhale reach up, up to your thumbs, Set your hands back down, 
is slowly the other side back up. Drop the hands to the ground. And then from here you're gonna take that right leg back and up into your tree of the dog. Inhale. And then you're gonna set down into your down dog. Drop to your knees. Set your hips onto your heels. And just sit down here and relax for a minute. I said moment and minute. Same for a moment. Shift the weight back up onto all fours, turn your toes under, lift your hips, bend your knees, then from here you're just going to bend your knees, sink down, and then hop forward. Shift your weight onto your heels, flatten out your back, lift your hands, and from there you're just going to drop down into a forward fold. And let the arms up, up to your hands. Bring your hands down to heart centre, roll your shoulders down your back, and relax, breathe for all the second. What time is it? Loads of time. So, uh, next up, we've got our mountain pose. Uh, our mountain pose, guys, is just a pose where you're trying to root yourself into the ground, stand nice and strong, have good posture, and uh, just try and spend as much time in this position as possible to get your body used to doing it. The way this works, you start off with your feet together. Okay, if you have flat feet, you'll feel this one straight away. So feet together, ankles together, soften your knees, and then from there, separate your knees without moving your feet. Okay, so your feet don't move at all, just you separate your knees, and you'll feel the arch in your foot just slowly come back. If you're a little bit sore, if uh, you're cramping or you're dehydrated or anything like that there, it can tense up, so if you push out too hard, your foot will cramp, don't push out too hard, push out just a little bit. From there you're going to squeeze your bum, push your hips forward, then you're going to lengthen your spine, roll your shoulders down your back, turn your palms out, and you're just going to breathe here for a few minutes. Not a few minutes, a few breaths. Just feel yourself rooting into the ground, find some balance, find stability, Turn your thumbs out, your palms are facing forward, your arms are straight, your neck is long, your shoulder blades are together, your knees are apart, your glutes are tight, and your belly is firm. I always think that this one is like, it's just standing there, but if you really want to get more into the pose, kind of go by the name of it and think to yourself how does a mountain feel if a mountain was to have like a personality and like they feel really like just really solid, really strong, really still. So if you try and embody those kind of attributes when you're doing this pose. It does really help. This is not just a relaxing pose guys, this is a <laughs> isometric. We're often standing here. Yeah, your back should be heating up a lot. All the muscles under your shoulder blades should be working, your glutes should be working, your feet should be shaking, your neck should be nice and long and relaxed. Whatever that should feel awful. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, relax the shoulders, relax the feet. And next up, I have this little this little flow set up, but um, this is really tough. So, uh, we're going to go for uh, the stand and side stretch. Stand and side stretch, our feet together. Now, we're going to lift one arm up. You're going to dip your hips, dip your ribs, and lean all the way to the side. Take a big deep breath in. And exhale, go deeper. And 
you're trying to get your rib cage as far away from your hip bone as possible. And then from there, you're going to slowly come back to center. You're going to raise both arms up, keeping your feet together. You're just going to sit down, keeping your chest up as low as you can. I'm going to hold here for a few breaths. Sit back down, but into a forward flow this time. So drop the hands, drop the head. Lift, lift, big deep breath in. And then big sigh out, go deeper. One more. From there, we'll slowly peel ourselves back up. Then we're just going to bring one arm up. Now lean to the side, stick your ribs into the other side. Again, separating your hip bone from your lowest rib. Pushing the ribs out, big deep breath in. And big side. center, shake it out, lift the arms straight up, sit down, big deep breath in, look to your thumbs, back nice and flat, Make sure you keep tucking your tailbone in this one because I find that I tend to stick my bum out. The whole thing about this is to keep your tailbone tucked under. It's a very good point, but thank Ashton for being on this longer than you need to. Take your breath in, <laughs> stand up tall, and then exhale full forward. <laughs> Shift your weight to your hands and start lifting your hips. And from here, we're going to slowly peel ourselves back up. Roll out your shoulders, your back should feel nice and warm now. And then, uh, we're going to go for warrior three, both sides, and then we'll call it a day that Ashton's going to take us through our stretches. So, the way we do this, we start off, left foot on the ground. Start, actually, start with your good leg, I'm left, left footed, I'm left handed. So, I'm going to start with my left leg. If you want to start with your right, just to gain a little bit of confidence, go for it. And then we're going to do this in the style of my single leg deadlifts. So, so grab your weight. <laughs> don't grab weights. Uh, from here, you're going to keep your left foot on the left side of your mat. You're going to try and turn your foot into a tripod. So your heel is one part of the tripod. The ball under your big toe is part of the tripod. And the ball under your little toe is part of the tripod. Okay, you're going to hold those. You're going to grab the floor with your toes. Spread your toes as much as you can and then grab your mat. And you're going to drive your knee in. That is a stable foot. Okay, you will notice that it might wobble and the knee knocks in. You want to rely on pushing that knee out for balance. Okay, if it knocks in, you're going to fall to one side. If you push it out, think of it like a wall you can lean on. You're going to lift your right knee up. And then from there, your hands are up heart center. And then you're going to exhale, keeping your standing leg soft, knee soft. So you're just going to extend that back leg away. You're going to point your toe towards your standing leg's heel. And you're going to lift the arms up overhead. And then from there, you're going to try and straighten out that sound of life. I'm going to hold this for three breaths. Bring your hands 
back together, front, back to front center. Hinge your back at your hips, pull your knee right up into your chest, control it, thank your body for working really hard there, and then give it a wee break. Walk out your legs. Shake out the arm, shake out the shoulders, and get ready for challenge number two. So we're gonna switch sides, plant your foot, find your wee tripod. Now again, I was pretty sturdy on my left leg, this is my bad side. Again, you will find that one side is better than the other. That is absolutely okay. So find your wee tripod, spread your feet or spread your toes, grab the floor with your toes, knock that knee out, push it out so you have a nice arch in your foot. Hands to heart center, we're gonna lift that knee. Pull your toes up as high as you can. Then from there, big deep breath in. And then we're gonna exhale, hinge your hips and extend that back leg back. Your sandal knee is soft, softer than it needs to be. Extend the leg out, raise the arms if you can. And then from here, you're gonna slowly start trying to push your heel into the ground to straighten out that sandal leg. And we're going for three breaths. Again, your toe on the raised leg is pointing towards your standing legs here. And from there bring your hands back to the center. Slowly pull that knee. Bring it back up. Thank your body for doing loads of hard work right there. And you're just going to slowly set that leg down, shake it out. And then from there, after all that intensity, you're just going to drop down to your knees. Sit on your bum, stretch out the inset of your foot because it was working really, really hard there. One hand to the side, sit down on your butt, lay back. Roll your shoulders into the mat, let your feet fall open, let your hands fall open, and this time this week, I am going to guide you through a nice Shadasana. So, from here, got your shoulders mounted into the mat, your legs falling open, all the effort in the world has gone away. You're just going to start noticing how good it feels to breathe. how good it feels to not have to do anything at all. There's no pressure, there's no intensity, it's just sensation. Close your eyes, start trying to breathe all the way down into your belly, and all the way out through your mouth. Belly feels rising and falling with each breath. If you have any little niggles or twists or jerks or anything like that, there, just get rid of them now. So you scratch your nose, shake your shoulders, wiggle your toes, do what you like. Get out any of that sort of twitchy energy. And just slowly. Feel every cell in your body set from a nice vibrational state just to a super still, calm state. And get full breaths. And from here on out, don't focus on your breath, let it rise and fall, whatever way it likes. No sense of control, let your body do what your body wants to do. From here, give your big toe to your little toe, permission to relax. And slowly move down the sole of your foot to the balls of your feet, and let those relax. Soften the arch in your foot. And your heel. Relax your ankles. Soften your 
shins. Let go of your calves. Release the knees. Soften your quads. Let go of your hamstrings. Just let your knees fall open. Relax your hips. Relax your glutes. Soften your glutes so you just sink into the mat a little bit more. Feel your belly rise and fall. Relax your sides. Relax your chest. the upper arms and the elbows, relax your wrists and your forearms, relax your hands and just feel whatever energy you can in the tips of your finger, fingers, you might feel a little bit of a buzzing, just feel some sort of tension. Just notice how it feels. And slowly move back up to the neck. Just let it soften. Relax the back of your skull. All the way up around the top of your head. Relax your brow. Soften your eyes, relax your nose and your cheeks, relax your tongue, relax your jaw, and just let whatever expression you have on your face soften. right here you just slowly start to imagine your heart pulsing imagine your heart pulsing with a warming glowing light imagine that light is the energy of love compassion generosity sincerity you just feel that light pulse expand to encompass your whole body. With each breath it pulses and gets bigger. Let that light expand to fill whatever room you're in. Completely envelop anyone in it. Let the next breath pulse it even more. Let it expand to fill up the whole building that you're in. Whether it's a house, office, whatever you're doing, and imagine that light expands again to encompass your neighborhood, your town, all the people that are, the people you don't know, the people you know, the people you love, your light shines over all of them. Imagine that light pulse again and expand to cover the entire country that you're living in. Again, spreading that feeling of love and generosity to everyone in it, compassion. And one more big deep breath. Imagine that light expands to encompass the whole world.
here for a moment. I'm going to end the session. Enjoy a few more minutes after I end this. Be perfectly still, not having to do anything, but feel positive emotions towards everyone else. Thank you very much for coming to my yoga. Namaste. Have yourselves a good day.